So I think, you know, if we want to really help people, we have to move away from transactional to transformational. And the only way we can do that is charge based on the outcome, not based on the hour. Welcome to the Healthpreneur Show with Yuri Elkheim. If you are a health professional looking to build and scale your business online, you've come to the right place. Each episode, you'll learn the practical and proven tips of how to scale your health business online and hear incredible conversations from world-class thought leaders. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Healthpreneur Show. I, I'm a new voice to you. Uh, my name is Seth Silvers and I'm new to the Healthpreneur team and I work with the marketing team over here and I'm here with Yuri. Yuri, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Good to have you here. Good. Good. Yeah, it's good to be here. One of the things that we're going to start doing more and more on this podcast is just having conversations about what, like what's working, what are we seeing work for our clients, um, but also just continuing to educate you all as health professionals on what you can be doing to grow your businesses. So Yuri, today we kind of wanted to talk about, yes, the perfect client pipeline, which for listeners do not know, just listen to a couple of our episodes and you'll learn more and more about that. We want to talk about like, how does that differ from just like a lead magnet funnel or so, some of these things that we hear about all the time in marketing? Yeah, totally. It's so for everyone who's listening or watching, who does know what a perfect client pipeline and it, it, perfect client pipeline is, it's, it's really a very simple business model that we teach all of our clients that we run ourselves. Um, that's the foundation of, of what health partner has been built on. So it's, um, it's a four step process. Um, we give them fancy labels like predictable prospecting, teach to sell, ask and assess, coach to close. And essentially what those different stages are, are when we look at predictable prospecting, we look at, let's put a message on Facebook and run ads. So basically putting money behind that message. So more people actually see it because the nature of the, like you have to pay to play nowadays. You can't just post stuff organically and expect miracles right. from that ad we invite people to what we call teach the sell, which is an online training masterclass webinar, whatever you want to call it. Um, and really that's the only piece of content your business needs to take it to a very high level. Like that's the only thing we had in Healthpreneur for probably two years. Obviously now we put out a lot more content, but most of our clients were like, just get this thing done and watch what happens. Third piece is ask and assess, which is really an application that's done in a very specific manner to filter people out and then invite people or move people through to the final step, which is coach to close, which is really a coaching conversation to see if there's an opportunity to work together. So that's the four-step pipeline that we teach all of our clients. It works every single time. The only time it doesn't work is obviously when you stop working it. So what's the difference between that and a lead magnet funnel? Lead magnet funnels, if we just, so everyone knows, uh, we're talking about like a cheat sheet, a PDF, maybe a, um, an ebook, uh, free opt-in, and then through, you know, a sequence of other stuff on the back end, maybe there's an upsell, maybe there's just a thank you page. So the reason, I think the reason this is important to understand is that I think there's just a lot of very confusing advice in the marketing space. And it's not that any of it's wrong. I think what I think a lot of people don't have is context where they don't have enough experience to understand what's happening behind the veil. So when they see someone running a funnel online, they're like, oh, I should do that too. They see like the big gurus doing stuff I'm like, oh, I need to do that. But a lot of times we don't realize that a lot of those funnels, they're not breaking even for like six months in some cases, right? Or we don't really know what the numbers look like behind the scenes. And I say this because in my previous health business that, you know, we helped half a million customers we did all of that stuff, like every single possible funnel you could think of. We had on our blog, we had 1.4 million visitors a month and every single category of blog post, we had 12 different categories that we talked about, like kind of discussion points on our blog. Each one led into a specific lead magnet. So there's 12 different funnels on the back end of all of our content. And each one of those had their own convoluted, you know, uh, journey. Right. It's very complicated to make that work. But I think the big thing that the perfect client pipeline allows us to do is it allows, it allows us to better qualify people because getting someone, especially in today's day and age, to watch a 45 or 60 minute presentation and then fill in an application and then spend an hour on the phone with you, that's a very different level of person than someone who just downloads a one page PDF and then never opens your emails. And I think at the essence, that is the most fundamental difference. And I think, you know, 
having worked with so many clients now, I've never met anyone who doesn't want more committed clients. So if we want more committed clients, we have to start the marketing journey right. in that fashion as well. So that's kind of at a high level, fundamentally, the major difference between most funnels online and the way we do our perfect client pipeline. Right. How, how would people be able to like kind of self-diagnose and know, like, are the, you know, maybe they're getting subscribers regularly um, or they're getting people that are downloading their documents or cheat sheets or whatever it might be. Yeah. How can people kind of like self-diagnose and really know are, are the people coming in committed or are they not like, should we be kind of auditing that yeah. a little bit as a business? I think the easiest thing is to look at your bank account. <laughs> I mean, yeah. like as much as I don't want to use money as a marker of impact, it is right. Because someone who's making a million dollars in their business is fundamentally transforming more people's lives than someone who's making $5,000 a year. Like it's right. like, there's no argument on this planet that is going to convince me otherwise. And so I think you have to look at the bank account because that's a reflection of the value, the market or the value the business is creating in the marketplace. That means more people helped or maybe at a deeper level. So that's number one. Second thing is just like on a day-to-day basis, like does it feel like a grind trying to get people like to the next level? Like I remember in my first business, it, it turned into, it, it became a promotion machine because we were, everything was so low end. Like we had no high end offers on the back end. Mm-hmm. And so we brought people in for free. Then it was a $7 upsell. Then it was like a $47 program. And it was like the margins were so low. And like, I mean, the volume, the, like um, for the transactional value was so low relative to like a higher price coaching program that we didn't even have enough products in our own business to then make up enough back end where we didn't have to promote all the time. So what ends up happening is somebody comes into our business and they're like, okay, they're a lead on our list. And now we're looking for like just internal promotions, external promotions. And I'm sure people are on these lists. Like you just like get mm-hmm. bombarded one day after another with the next diet, the next workout, the next thing. And that's when I started to recognize there was a major flaw in that type of system because you either have to have a massive amount of front end acquisition, but if you're offering low end, low value products or offers, you're not going to be profitable on that, which means the back end needs to make up for that. And if you don't have a tremendous number of SKUs, whether it's supplements or coaching offers or products, you can't make up the difference. And what ends up happening is, you, you have to scramble to start promoting other people's stuff. Hmm. And that's never a position I ever wanted to be in again. So that's why when we started Healthpreneur, I said, let's have one program that is higher priced that transforms people's lives in a tremendous way in their business, obviously. And so we don't have to play that game, right? Right. So I think if you're finding yourself spinning your wheels, always like, what am I promoting next? What are we doing this month? That like, it's always just like a nonstop treadmill. Mm-hmm. That's a telltale sign that your business model is not sustainable. And I yeah. think that has to go with the pricing, obviously, of your offers, but obviously the way you attract clients in the first place. Right. Well, and I think, I mean, we talk about that a lot in the health space of like the difference between somebody going into a clinic, hoping the insurance will cover it. You know, they'll go to some of their PT meetings. Like, I mean, uh, most people don't even do physical therapy. Like they, mm-hmm that's a huge issue in the health space is people don't ever recover fully from surgeries because they're just not, you know, they're not doing it. They're not bought in. Cause it's like, yeah, my insurance covers it, which my exactly. employer pays for. They have no skin. In the What's the difference between that and, you know, me signing up for, you know, spending $3,000 to work with a coach for the next eight weeks and transform like my diet or something like, w- what's the difference in those two scenarios? the difference is how much you pay. And like, this is like, I want like everyone watching, listening to this, I really want you to take this to heart because we fundamentally believe premium pricing is beneficial for everyone, like you and your clients. And you might say, well, you're like, you're trying to make health inaccessible. I'm not trying to make it inaccessible. What I'm trying to say is if we are in the game of really being here to transform someone's life, it's not going to happen if they're relying on insurance and never showing up for their their sessions, right? Mm -hmm. So in the context of like a coaching program or um, a practitioner coach slash client relationship, 
there's a very big difference between somebody paying for one session and just kind of seeing where it goes compared to someone who commits to an eight or 12 week program. And from the business owner side, the practitioner, the coach, it's very transactional when it's session by session. Like, and I'm sure you've, you've seen this too, Seth, like Mm -hmm. when I go to see a physio or a chiropractor, I have never in my life ever been suggested to be put into some type of longer term treatment plan. It was always just like, all right, um, great session. Uh, when, when do you want to come in next? <laughs> yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, that's not even slightly yeah. helpful for me as the patient. Right. I'm like, dude, tell me what I need to do. Tell me when you need to mm-hmm. see me, how often I should be doing this. And I think there's just, the, the, again, like it's to no fault of their own. The, the reality is like no health practitioner that comes into the real world, meaning that they finish school and actually start their business is ever taught how to run a business, is ever taught how to sell or market. And that's a fundamental mm-hmm. problem that we're obviously you know, solving with Healthpreneur. So I think you know, if we want to really help people, we have to move away from transactional to transformational. And the only way we can do that is charge based on the outcome, not based on the hour. Right. And whether that's online or in person, I think it's the same thing. You'll get a very different yeah. level of commitments from someone who's doing that. Was there, uh, when did you realize that pretty much like free doesn't work, whether it was like in your life personally, or whether it was, uh, a, a client of yours or something like, I think we all have to realize at some point, like, wait, free doesn't really deliver much. I should, I should make a list and actually do a follow-up episode <laughs> on how many different occasions I've been reminded of this. Okay. So the first one that comes to mind is, so my second book, the all day fat burning diet, I was, I was putting together the manuscript and I had a really good process that was proven to work. And I had, you know, we had a lot of people on our following at the time. So I sent out an email. I said, Hey guys, I'm looking for a bunch of beta testers who want to get like the, the 1.0 version kind of behind the scenes. You'll do the work in exchange for a testimonial that we can include in the book. And we had about, I'm trying to think it was probably in the neighborhood of like 250 people, right? It was free. We set up a Facebook group specifically for them. And it was like 21 days. Like it wasn't like it was 21 days. It wasn't very long. So 250 people um, participated and like, take a guess how many people actually completed the 21 days and submitted like some type of testimonial or before and after. Yeah. Le- less than 10. Yeah. Like it was like, if I can think about in the book, there's probably about 10 people, you know? And I was like, all right, that's another, <laughs> another strike against free. Um, I mean, even, you know, we've, we've done events virtually where we've had a free event and we've seen the difference in the show up and the commitment. I think another big one for me, and this is like, people ask me all the time, like, Gary, why don't, why, why don't you do a live webinar instead of evergreen automated? And I'll tell you why, because I've done a lot of them. And the last one that I did in my previous business, this is a couple of years ago, we had 1500 people register for this webinar and it was Thursday night, eight o'clock was the show time, for instance. And I remember getting on and we had 120 people on the line. Hmm. And I was like, okay. I mean, it's not a small number, but relatively speaking, that's less than mm-hmm. 10% of people that showed up. And then we had like follow-up and reminders. And I'm like, why are we wasting our time on this? And right. so we started to look at, you know, the difference of Evergreen, even though Evergreen is still free. Um, I'm like, well, I'm not going to do an event every couple of weeks if no one's going to show up. Right. So I I think the reality and like the thing in the health space is that we all want to help a lot of people. Right. So we think that, Oh, let's just make it accessible for everyone. Guys, the reality is that not everyone is ready to be helped and you can't Mm -hmm. do that. You can't, no one benefits from free, right? Cause if they don't pay, they don't pay attention. And that's, that's the sad reality. The sooner you embrace that, the easier life will be for your business. Yeah. So, I mean, you still offer like your webinars are free as opposed to like a paid training. Why, why do we do that here at Healthpreneur, even though we, you know, I don't know if I'd say don't believe in free, but we fully understand to not have high expectations with free. Yeah. I think there's a balance. I think, you know, so in the case of a pipeline, like the perfect client pipeline, I'm involved in none of it. Like I created the the machine, right? Our clients create the machine They recorded the webinar once. And then they're removed from the process. The only thing they're doing on the back end is taking phone calls. 
So from a time investment perspective, it's like, okay, cool. Let me create an asset that will work for me while I'm working out, hanging out with my kids, doing whatever else, and knowing full well that, you know, for the majority, the majority of people watching that are not going to do anything. However, there's going to be a select few who will. And when you look at the numbers, it actually makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason we don't charge for that is because we have no rapport, no, no, like, and trust with cold, with cold audiences. Like, I think it's different if I'm like, if any one of us is like Kim Kardashian and it's like, right. Hey, I'm hosting a webinar. It's like 47 bucks. Everyone's like, Oh my God, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. there, so the thing is the higher up on the ladder of like celebrity and status you go. Right. Well, yeah, that's probably like Tony Robbins doesn't do free stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I guess his, his like knowledge broker blueprint webinar was free, but yeah, exactly. But I mean, yeah. understand that like if something's free, there's going to be a pitch in some way, shape or form, right? right? But it's again, how to craft that in a way that's like, you know, good. Um, so like the idea is like, I, th I think marketing really is about educating an audience to the points where you're adding enough value and building a bit of a, a relationship with them so they can know they can trust you. So that selling becomes almost unnecessary. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that a lot of times when people don't know who you are, they don't trust you. You can't, you can't expect them to pay for something right off the bat. So it's, mm -hmm. it's trying to strike the balance of, okay, if we can't get them to pay off the bat, then let's get them to commit a little bit because people can commit in two ways. They can commit with their money or they can commit with their time. So the pipeline is really about helping people or really getting people to commit with their time and then eventually with their money, if there's a good fit versus mm -hmm. like a lead magnet funnel, which is like, just download the cheat sheet. There's no time commitments. Half the people don't even open the welcome email to get the download and there's no money commitments. So you're getting right. people that are much less uh, committed to the whole process that they, you know, said they're interested in. So, yeah. Yeah. I think that's huge. And that, that I mean, why the perfect client pipeline works so well is because it gives like, we strategically put these opportunities in there for people to be more committed. Like it's yeah. almost like we're making it harder on purpose because we know that the people that are really ready to take action and see that transformation will make those moves as opposed to just, you know, yeah. taking everything that's free and taking the easy route. Like we don't really want to work with the people that just want the easy route because yeah. you just don't get much in life that comes well, and, easy. And the other thing like, and you've noticed this too, is like, most people who work with us, they get on the phone with our team and they're already like, I want to do this. Like intuitively something in the webinar spoke to them and they're like, man, this makes a lot of sense. You can't do that in a couple page PDF. There's a, there's a magic right. that happens in a presentation that we've all experienced, whether it's online or watching a documentary or watching someone from stage. And, and that's why I say like the better you market, the less you have to sell. So everything before the phone call is marketing. And if you can craft that journey in such a way that adds a tremendous amount of value and gets people thinking differently about what they're going through and the outcome that they want, showing them a better way to get there, it becomes a lot easier to, to enroll those types of clients because you don't have to hard sell and push them because they've already sold themselves through that process. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this is all... it it makes sense because we see it every day. Like we see it every day working with our clients. But uh, my, I, I think the, the listeners, the people that are tuning in and trying to figure this out and trying to, you know, craft their best lead magnet, like what would be like the one piece of advice to be like, okay, go do this to make sure that people are actually being more committed to the process, more committed to the funnel, if you will. Yeah. I mean, listen, like whether you're creating a lead magnet or a book or a webinar, anything you're putting out into the marketplace, I think the most important thing you have to, just two things. Number one, it needs to be like laser congruent with the ultimate offer. So let's say you put out a lead magnet for, um, let's just say like you, you do with like thyroid stuff and you put out a lead magnet for uh, top 10 ways to lose weight. And then the offer was for thyroid stuff, right? Like a thyroid program. Like, yes, there's, there's definitely some congruence, but it's a little bit off. Versus if you put out a lead magnet or some type of training around, um, you know, the five essential blood tests to diagnose and assess your thyroid, right? And like how to make sense of them. That 
is going to appeal to people who've probably done some tests or trying to make sense of them, or they're looking to do some tests because maybe they have an underactive thyroid. And now if that lends itself to the ultimate offer being a program around improving thyroid function, now you have that congruency. So I think that's super, Mm -hmm. super important. And then the second thing is understanding human nature, which is highly wired around novelty, which Mm -hmm. basically means you have to, you have to show people, um, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, but you have to reinvent the packaging. What that means is, I mean, you just have to make it sexy. Like you have to, you have to put a, a unique hook around something, a spin, some type of angle so that what it is you're presenting people, they're not like, Oh, I've seen that before. It needs right. to be different. It needs to be unique. And that's just not something most people are wired to think about. Again, no fault of their own, just because they're not trained in that, but that's super important. And that's one of the biggest reasons why conversions are not as high as they could be in many offers. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's good. And those are two really practical easy steps that people can start integrating and I encourage people that are just now, um, you know, if you're, if this is like your first episode or you haven't listened to many, like we have so many, we have so much content in here, like every single week we're showing up and we're just teaching you how to grow your online health business. So Gary, thank you. And uh, we'll see you guys next time on the health Center show. Thanks Seth. Thanks everyone. Thank you so much for listening to The Health Premier Show. Are you ready to take the next step in growing your health business? We'd love to send you a free training that has helped our clients grow to seven and eight figures in their business. Sound good? Text the word training to 647-424-5280. Again, for the free training, text the word training to 647-424-5280. If you enjoyed the show, we would love for you to leave a review on your favorite podcasting platform. That's the best way for platforms to know that they should get the show in front of more people just like you. And if you're looking for more incredible content to help you grow your business, check out the show notes of this episode, where we'll have links to our highest rate episodes of the Healthpreneur Show. We'll see you next time.